Okay, so what we're uh, ready now to do is to tie in the tail. As you saw maybe whenever I was panning at the very beginning, uh, the tail is made up of three different types of, uh, three different colours of, of Arctic Runner. Um, so as well as the, the sort of the colours, another very important aspect is the actual, um, the way they're layered. Uh, whenever you're using a very soft material uh, like Fox or Arctic Runner, um, it, it's quite easy for them to wrap around the hooks as you're fishing with the fly. Uh, but one of the things that Ross has done um, uh, is has looked at to, sort of to combat this is is to layer it in such a way that it, that it doesn't do so. And what what Ross has actually done is um, he's used um, the first layer, which is the red, uh, and it's relatively dense and relatively short. And then the layers above that, the two layers above that, are actually um, longer and finer. So by using a short, dense layer at the beginning, it actually helps to hold the longer um, hair or longer part of the wing above it, away from the hook. So that actually works very well. It's very effective in the fishing. Um, I say this is Arctic Runner. Um, there's a lot of debate whether or not um, or sort of the, the the value or, or worth of using Arctic Runner. It is quite a, a relatively expensive material for the uh, for what you get. I use Vineyard stuff. Um, which does vary quite a bit in terms of the quality, um, but I don't know if you can maybe see that from from the camera. But there's actually there's like a translucence about runner um, that you don't get from uh, fox. This is a fox, just a bit of fox by comparison, um, and the fox is just a, a duller color, whereas the uh, the runner has, as I said, a translucence and it also has these sort of longer guard hairs. Um, so as I say. I like the, the Arctic Runner is what is used in the original pattern. Ross um, had, had obviously experimented with different materials and this is the one that he he's arrived at. Um, when you see it in the water it really does become alive. So as I say that's what I like to use um, in the tail. So the first the first um, layer is our red um, and I've made one earlier uh, just to speed things up. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, there's a slight tapering in it as well. Um, and slightly tapered uh, longer at the top. Um, so literally we just tie that in. And what we want to be doing is, is to tie it just, just about to where the hooks would come, the hook points. Um, and as I say, you want this layer to be quite dense uh, and quite short. Uh, so as it holds the longer uh, layers above it, away from the hook points. So literally just tie that in. Um, like that, and use your thumb just to spread it around a little bit, just on the on the tube, and then just tie it in, just like that. And what you want to do as well is is to tie it to um, just about the length of the body, because you want to have a um, a nice even. Um, uh, base to be tying onto. Then the next layer is the orange, and as you can see here, what you want to do is you want to tie the the uh, orange longer, it's quite a bit longer than the red, and it, it's also finer and um, use more of the guard hairs and less of the under hairs. So let's just tie it in like that, and again, just tie it down to the. Where your body will land. Uh, at this stage, I'll just do another half hitch because we don't want all those materials to be coming out. Um, you can hopefully see that's already starting to sort of taper nicely. Um, before I actually tied in the orange, you could also have tied in some uh, some angel hair. Uh, but I normally just tie it in at this stage here. Um, I like, uh, I think angel hair is a great material, and again, Ross has, has carefully used angel hair. Um, it's a lot, it's, it's a finer material, it still gives the sort of the, the glint um, that, that you want, but it, it's a much sort of finer material, it doesn't interfere with the natural movement of the materials. Things like crystal hair are sort of heavier types of, of flash materials um, they can sort of uh, affect the movement of the of the actual material um, so again it's a very well thought out sort of fly in terms of all the materials and, and the runner is an example of that whenever I'm tying that in I just go below the hook just to anchor it in I also tie it at different lengths so I tie it in like that just do a couple of wraps just to secure it and then I bind that 
back on itself and basically that just locks it in uh, which means it's never going to come up out and then just snip that off um, and the other thing I like to do is then just to taper it a little bit because uh, when it gets wet you don't want it all sort of uh, congealing together so if you cut it at different lengths uh, when it's in the water it uh, it'll keep the movement so that's our two wings plus um, the flash and then the final material uh, or layer again is the arctic runner and this time it's the magenta color and it it should be so you've got short red long uh, orange and then the magenta should be sort of halfway between uh, and it just sits along the top of the wing See me with just uh, twisting the thread there, or counter spinning it, and that what that does that just helps to um, to flatten the thread, because as you tie the thread will actually uh, it'll twist, and it'll not lay as flat. So that's basically our wing, uh, our wings are our tail, um, and so what I'll do is I'll just do another half hitch just to make sure that doesn't part company. Okay, so now we're ready to do the uh, the body, but uh, the first thing we need to do is to tie in uh, our rib, and as I say, we use Mirage flat tinsel. So let's get some of that. And again, what I do is just lock it underneath like that, put it to whatever length you want. And just wind it back up the body. Uh, just put in the materials in there. That's us ready to go.